Hello, my name is Alexander Martin. I'm an Applications Engineer at Unitronics. This video will help to explain the use of string libraries and their main functions. If an application has users that require multiple languages, or if the application will be used in areas that require other languages, string libraries can be used to fit this need. String libraries are generally used to switch HMI text elements between different languages. This allows you to write only one program and utilize a single screen instead of having to write multiple programs or have multiple screens for different languages. The languages can be set with simple logic through the HMI buttons, power-up conditions, or even hardwired inputs. I will show how this is configured using our VisiLogic software, as well as an example program that changes text between a couple of languages. String libraries allow us to assign static or dynamic text within a lo known location. This can be used to display text for many HMI elements including buttons, text boxes, binary text, list of text by pointer and range, password string displays, and additional alarm information. A program can, ha can have up to 16 libraries depending upon which controller is being used. By default, controllers start with four or eight libraries. If using a V130, increasing the number of libraries will reduce the memory by half each time it is doubled. Each string within the library can contain up to 128 characters. This would be the string library configuration, and for static text, there is a different line ID number for each element. Only one library can be active at a time, and this is switched within the program. When I switch to another library for a different language, all of the text will change corresponding to what is typed within that specific library. Any text element assigned to string ID 0 will display information within the ID 0 list for all libraries. At the bottom here, this string editor is for string ID 0. In English, it says for English, and string ID 0 is also listed for the next two libraries, which are both English and Spanish, which correspond to for Spanish and for French um, within those respective libraries. The same is done in string ID 0, also in English, which can be shown up top as well as the start button. Also within Spanish and French, the language is switched over. To select static text, all you need to do is select a line and type in the desired text for each necessary library. Users can also include command characters such as carriage return and line feed so that the string will dis be displayed on separate lines. This is shown in, on the left. You can also assign indirect library elements. Indirect addressing can be used in conjunction with static text. All you need to do is assign an address and a vector length. Here I've selected the insert indirect string into string library 4. I've assigned an operating address, MI20, and length of 10. The indirect text variable will display as a vector of numerals corresponding to how many vector uh, variables are being used. Once the static or dynamic text is assigned within the string configuration, it needs to be assigned to an HMI element. Here I've selected just a text box, the HMI object type. And under Properties, I've selected String from Library. Then it prompts a window to select the string ID from a list. This can be direct or indirect. When selecting direct, here I've selected Hello, which I can scroll back and show you is String ID 3 from the English Library. Again, String ID 3 will be the same, and when the library changes, it will say hello in each corresponding language.
when using an indirect MI as a pointer, the index starts at zero. Please note that this does not specify the library selection, only the string ID number. It is also important to know how to select the specific string libraries. There is a function block within VisiLogic to set the specific string library. This can be chosen as a constant from the library list using a drop-down menu, or an indirect using an operand use, um, as a pointer. Also, SI491 is the switch current text library system integer. This concludes the PowerPoint presentation. Now I'll show an example program that uses string libraries to switch languages. This is how the program looks. I'll go online to show you how it operates. Let's make this a little larger. Here's the small example program. It involves a couple of buttons, a start button, a stop button, and a text box. Below, there's text links to each uh, string library I've used. There's an English, Spanish, and French library. There are also buttons on the bottom that scroll through the libraries instead of directly linking them. So you can see here, right now everything is in English. If I select this button for Spanish, everything directly switches over immediately. I can also do the same for French. And then switching back to English. The buttons on the bottom are also linked to an indirect operand that selects the library. And selecting each button scrolls through the library list. I can also show you how this program was built within VisiLogic. There are two ways to navigate to the string library. One is through the string library in the Project Explorer on the left, and the other is through View String Library, which brings up the string library configuration. As shown before, there was a text box here. Once the text box properties is opened, I selected string from library. This then prompted me to select a direct or indirect library ID. I'd select string ID 0, uh, string ID 3. This brings up the string library selection window. Here's in the French library, but I can switch to any library I wish. I selected library 3. As you can see, string ID 3, when on English, will display as hello. And in Spanish, it will say hola. In French, bonjour. If I wanted to type in static text, all I would need to do is double-click the row and start typing in the text. Here's an example of an indirect string. This is configured by inserting an indirect string. Each character will be stored in a single byte. It asks for a start of string. Here I've selected MI20, and then a string length. The string length can be varied, and it will display a series of numerals depending upon how many indirect strings are inserted. If 
I select another one. It will display as indirect string variable 2. Also, if you desired, you can insert a carriage return and a line feed, which will automatically assign it within the string ID. As you can see, I'm on currently the English library, although that can be selected from a drop-down menu to the Spanish or French libraries. There are a couple of tools you can use within the string library configuration. First is rename library. I have renamed my libraries corresponding to the language I'm using, although by default they just display string library 1 through 8. You can also change the number of libraries. Right now I have 8, but I also have a drop down to select 16. You can select all and then export the, uh, export the selection to Excel or to a CSV. Other icons used are edit string, delete the selected string in the current library, delete all strings with the selected ID from all libraries, cut, copy, and paste. There's one for pasting the string into the current library and another in for pasting into all libraries with the same ID. There's also find selected string and highlights um, not referenced strings. There's also a next unused place which will assign ID number six since it is not used yet and also a search. Within the search I can type in for example button Click Find Next, and it will come up with the Start button in string ID number 1. If I select it again, it will find the Stop button in string ID 2. I can show you how these string libraries are switched within VisiLogic. Under Strings, you can use Set String Library. I have three buttons that were linked directly on the HMI here for English, for Spanish, and for French. Using the set string library, I selected directly each library from a drop down menu. I also mentioned that you can indirectly select each library. This is using the other buttons to scroll through left and right with the libraries. Here I have an incrementer and decrementer. That uses an MI operand as a pointer. As you can see when I go online, right now I'm on string library 3. When I press the buttons, It will increment and decrement through the specific string libraries. This concludes the presentation on how to use string libraries to switch between languages. I hope you found the information helpful. Thank you.